He heads Colors Gujarati and Colors Marathi and has also set up the company's operations in USA and UK and has led strategy for MTV Networks India. He has had over a decade of myriad professional experience in strategy, consulting, mergers and acquisitions, advisory and assurance with Arthur Anderson and KPMG India. He is a fellow of the inaugural class of Ananta Aspen's India Leadership Initiative and member of the Aspen Global Leadership Network, AGLN, a member of BMW Foundation's World Young Leaders Forum and has been on the Governing Council of CII Young Indians. Please give a big round of applause for Mr. Anush Podder from Colors Gujarati. He is present here and he is going to talk on satellite TV rights and the way forward for monetizing for Gujarati film industry. Mr. Anuj Poddar. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. I want to especially thank Professor Matthew. Uh, you know, speaking after lunch is very, very difficult. So thank you for waking everybody up and keeping them awake. So it makes it easier for me now. I hope I don't put all of you to sleep now. So I want to thank LGIMC for uh, inviting me over and I think it's a great initiative to have this seminar. It's the first one I've heard about on Gujarati media and entertainment in any form and right now talking about Gujarati films. And when Darshan, and by the way I want to thank Darshan and everybody else also, uh, when Darshan and I first spoke about this and he said it's on Gujarati films only and not on Gujarati entertainment as a whole, uh, I was wondering what am I going to talk about because I'm not part of Gujarati films. But what I have done in the last couple of years is gotten involved with Gujarati television. And I think television and films and all other forms, whether it's theater or any other form, they all form part of a common ecosystem. So you cannot have one part of the ecosystem or just films doing well by itself unless the entire ecosystem grows. So I want to really, you know, I was sitting here since morning. I came in early because I wanted to know more about Gujarati films than I already know. But I also want to now share a little more perspective as a broadcaster, as a television person. Uh, Gujarat is a new market for me, but I've spent a lot of time in the television business across India. I originally set up Colors, the Hindi channel. I run Marathi. I'll share some examples from Marathi with you. I've done some work around Asia, etc. So I, I think I have a fair understanding of the television perspective. And, you know, I want to bring that perspective onto this table for all of you. The second reason I'm here is because, you know, Gujarati films are doing really well, but they're doing really well at the box office in the theaters. I think there's a big missing component about Gujarati films not reaching out to people on television, which is satellite revenues, and I want to talk about satellite revenues and why that is not happening. And you know, I've had some conversations with some of the producers, I think some of you are over here. Uh, I don't think, sorry to say this, I don't think the Gujarati film industry or the producers yet really have an understanding how the TV business works and how the satellite business works. So I want to try and share some of that. I think that will make it easier for all of you to understand what drives decisions for us as television broadcasters. And it's probably very different from what drives decisions for you as filmmakers and producers and what you think or you expect on the satellite front. Can I go to the next slide, please? Let me try this clicker once. Yeah, that's fine. So just quickly, this is what I'm going to try and cover, and I'm going to keep it brief. I know we are running late. Uh, talking about where I see the market as a whole, we are at a very early stage of evolution on Gujarati entertainment. So it's good to be patting ourselves on the back and feeling good, but we need to realize we've not yet scratched the surface of our real potential. So the road ahead for us is long. There's a lot more ground to cover ahead for us. Talking just briefly about Colors Gujarati from the... Uh, and, you know, Darshan warned me, don't plug the channel. I'm not trying to plug the channel. What I'm trying to bring you is a perspective of what we are learning. Why are we doing what we're doing and what are we trying to learn in this process? Gujarati films, you know, you know it all, so I'm not going to talk too much about that. Uh, but I'm going to focus on the role of satellite for films and why, why that is important beyond just the revenue that it brings to you. And from there, take it onwards to how do we as broadcasters make decisions on satellite, how do satellite markets work across in the other languages, and what are we looking for? So just as I said, you need to understand the buyer's context. If you want to sell satellite rights, you need to understand how the buyer looks at this. 
Let me touch upon first, like I said, Gujarat, uh, Gujarati entertainment is at a really, really early stage of evolution. You know, we've all spoken about, and Professor Matthews has spoke about, and we all know Gujarat is one of the leading states of India. But leading or developed or, you know, advanced states by economy, yes. By affluence, yes. By factories, yes. By uh, probably cars on the road, yes. Uh, but I think the entertainment part is really lagging behind if you compare not just India or national or Hindi, but if you look at other states too. If you look at television, and I'm now the pie chart that you see on the left, that's just showing the viewership of Gujarati language television within Gujarat. I'm not talking at national level. So less than 4% of people in Gujarat, or less than the total viewership of Gujarati language television within Gujarat itself is less than 4% of the total viewership of this market. So 96% of the viewership by Gujaratis in Gujarat is not for Gujarati language television. And if you compare that with the other states also, if, I, if you look at the money aspect of it, the economic aspect of it, if you look at all the other states, I've not put Hindi figures, I've not put sports, I've not put news, I'm just talking other language channels in the other states. You can see how small Gujarat is at about 60 crores, some say 70 crores, 50 crores, 80 crores, whatever be the number. It's the smallest regional state in India from a broadcast revenue perspective. Okay? I don't think that does any justice to the economic value of the state. Typically, this reflects, and I'll talk about Orissa. We have a channel in Orissa also. Orissa is one of the most, uh, what should I say, developing or the underdeveloped states in India, one of the smaller economies. Orissa, a state like Orissa also, is bigger than Gujarat. Typically, the ad market size is a function of the economy, the affluence, and the, the people in that state. I don't think this does justice to the Gujarat market. So why is the market so underdeveloped? Now, as I said, I, before I look, started looking at Colors Gujarati, or before I came into the Gujarat market, I was focusing on the other markets. And the moment you know, we said we want to get into the Gujarat market, I, I was surprised. I met so many people telling me it can't be done. Don't waste your time. So I was a guy from outside. I'm trying to come into Gujarat market. I'm trying to bring content here. And the first response I get from people is don't waste your time. It's not going to happen. People here don't want to watch Gujarati entertainment. And these people, these people are not from peop not people in Bombay. These are people in Gujarat. I've met people, again, some of them are here in this room, in Gujarat, who tell me that Gujarati entertainment is never going to take off. So I think that's a very deep-rooted uh, belief that we've kind of chosen to imbibe that Gujarati entertainment, and again, I'm saying Gujarati entertainment as a whole. I'll come to films specifically. That is not going to take off. It's not going to be really worth the effort. Look, when you're talking about films, you have two months, 30 days. I don't know how much time it takes to shoot the film or you may have X crores of money to shoot the film. Uh, if you're only a Gujarati person, only doing in Gujarat, maybe that's your only option. But you also know Hindi, you also know other languages, you also know other things. If you're a writer, you can write in any language. You have choices to do it in any language, any market. If this market is so small, and with the same effort, your 30 days of time, you can write a script for another film, you can uh, sing a, you know, write lyrics for another film. Why will you not do that? Why will you do this? unless this market grows. So I think why you're doing it today is not because what you think today is the sum total of your future potential, but because you want to see this grow and you want to be at the leadership or the front lines of making that growth happen so that where you are now is not where you're five years from now. So stop, I'm sorry, I don't want to sound negative, I think it's great what we're doing, but don't get complacent or don't get so happy about where we are right now that we stop looking at the bigger prize. Think about what your potential 10 years from now is Think about what will take you from where you are now to 10 years out from here. You can grow 10x, and what does it take to you know, get there? So there are a lot of learnings we need to have You know, when Professor Matthew was again talking about it. I'm sorry, I saw some of the questions. Uh, again, I'm saying this you know, in a good spirit. I think somewhere the questions reflected a sense of jingoistic pride in what we're doing. There's a difference in being jingoistic versus proud of what you're doing. You need to take the learnings with an open, objective mind and try and work on those inputs. So anyway, so as I said, I got a lot of people saying, no, it can't be done. I didn't believe it, and I yet don't believe it. I think Gujarat market, and again, I'm talking television, is there to grow. And you know, I look at things from, you know, I, I had two or three proxy text, uh, tests. Uh, and I'm Marwadi, but I don't believe Rajasthani television ever has a future. Because as Marwadis, my generation doesn't speak Marwadi language at all, okay? I don't think anybody, and my daughter doesn't even know I understand Marwadi. She doesn't even know Marwadi or understand one word of it. But look at the number of Gujaratis. Every single Gujarati that I know speaks in Gujarati. 
at least to each other. Uh, I come from Bombay, and the only reason I know Gujarati is because when I meet a Gujarati, first thing he talks to me is in Gujarati. So, who pan Gujarati bolu shakuchu? Not because I'm Gujarati, but because they love their language so much, they speak the language so much. So, if they're so attached to the language, that's the first test whether local entertainment can work. The second test for me is whether there are other proxies. So, fine, television doesn't work or has not yet taken off. Films till a couple of years back when I was looking at it had not taken off. But there is enough other Gujarati medium entertainment, whether it's theater, theater is very developed. If you look at uh, magazines or print or newspapers, that's fairly developed. So language in consumption form is very strong, in media is very strong. And the third test for me was whether uh, the community is culturally very distinctive. So can I see, and I'm being politically incorrect, can I see a person there and see what, how he dresses, how he eats, how he behaves, and guess that he or she is Gujarati? If I can, I would say that's a good sign. That means they are culturally distinctive identity. So if there's a culturally distinctive identity and a lifestyle and the language that they form, uh, they're very particular about and completely popular and you know, speak that language, then there's enough room to make content and entertainment around their unique identity, around their language, around their tastes and preferences. Okay? So that's the positives. Uh, in, the, in, in, in the interest of time, I'm not going to cover some of the negatives right now. But it's really, to my mind, a chicken and egg situation. Will the content come first or will the audience come first? I think as makers and creators of content, as people in the business, it is our job to put the content first. We can't tell the audience, come start watching cinema if the cinema doesn't change. We can't tell them, come start watching television if we don't give them better content. So we need to first make the first move. We need to supply the content. We need to supply the good films. We need to keep bettering our films and bettering our uh, television content, and the people will come. But you know, they are not going to come unless you give them better stuff. So that's the audience side. The second side, simple. I think uh, cinema and television is not just an art form, but it is a commerce. If it's not going to be, if it's not going to break even, if it's not going to pay for itself, it's not going to sustain and it's not going to survive. So, but you know, the money I'm not really worried about. If the audience comes and they have deep pockets, the money will come. They will buy the tickets and advertisers and brands will chase them. It's very simple. So talking briefly about you know, our experience and my experience as Colors Gujarati on the television front, uh, I get some feedbacks. Just now somebody was asking me just half an hour before this. You know, we have a lot of big ticket non-fiction shows in Hindi, Jhalak uh, Dikhlaja, Big Boss, etc. And he asked me, why don't you do this in Gujarat? Uh, I would love to do a Jhalak Dikhlaja in Gujarat, a Gujarati version. I would love to do a Big Boss in Gujarat. But the fact is the market is not ready for it. And you know, I'm a businessman at the end of the day. I'm not going to put in 50 crores. You know, shows like this cost that kind of money to only see that go down the drain. So the market, what we are doing right now is testing the waters. Uh, we get some feedback that what we are doing is good to some. Some tell us it's not good enough. But we are testing the waters. We are trying to push the envelope. As we start seeing some audience traction, as we start ourselves learning what the audience likes and doesn't like, as we ourselves start feeling the pulse of the audience, and you know, over the last two years, we've made some mistakes and we made done some things right. We are starting to get a better grip on the audience, what they want, and it's a calibrated journey that we'll keep growing from where we are and taking that forward and growing the content and growing the supply. Uh, the second question, and this is Darshan's favorite, uh, where is Darshan, I don't know. His favorite point to me is that if you're producing Gujarati content, you need to produce it in Gujarat. You know, the first thing I did two years back when we wanted to do this, is came and meet, uh, come and meet all the Gujarati talent, Gujarati writers, Gujarati producers in Gujarat. Uh, I think they were good, but they were obviously not doing enough of television production because there was not much of, and when I say television production, I don't think news is television production. That's a cameraman going and covering the news with an OB van. By television production, I mean what we've spoken about since morning, content, writing, scripting, the grammar, the narrative. Uh, that is a learning and expertise that will come over a period of time. So when we scouted the market two years ago, I felt that's a, what should I say, that's a learning or that's a development of the ecosystem that will take a little longer for it to happen. So what we decided to do is to produce maybe 30 or 40 percent of our content in Gujarat, and the other 60 or 70 percent by Gujaratis, but out of Bombay. So the good or bad thing is a lot of the Gujarati talent, writers, actors, and we have some of the people here, have had to migrate out to Bombay because that's where the opportunities are or were for them. That's where the writers are being employed. That's where the theater artists are getting good you know, opportunities. That's where a lot of the work is happening. So we are using a lot of the Gujarati theater fraternity 
to produce and act in and write our content for television. Uh, writing, again, I think what we're doing is playing a positive role, wherein we are getting these people or artists or talent or writers or directors or producers out from even Hindi and getting them back into Gujarati content. So that wave has started, the wave from moving away from Gujarat to uh, Mumbai, and Mumbai is starting to work into Hindi. How do you get them back to their language, their roots? Obviously, when I'm producing a serial, uh, or if I'm producing content in Gujarati, it's closer to the Gujarati roots. It's closer to their stories, their lives, and they're getting back to their roots. So that's what I mean by development of the ecosystem. As this grows over the next few years, you'll see a lot more growth of the ecosystem of Gujarati entertainment, and hopefully within Gujarat itself. And therefore, the third point, that's really what I'm just talking about. To me, the success of Gujarati or Colors Gujarati is not my success. It, it doesn't matter. If I fail, that channel will shut down, and I have 17 other channels to run. But to me, that's a test or a barometer of where Gujarati entertainment will go from here. If that succeeds, I think the biggest benefactors of the success of Colors Gujarati will be the Gujarati entertainment industry. It will be their, their talent, their people, all of the people and audience in this marketplace. And that's why it's really important for us to make that work. Because what we're doing here is different from what we're doing in every other market. In every other market, every other channel that I run, I'm only playing a competition game. There are enough players in that market. My only focus is to how do I be better than the other competitive player? And how do I get a greater market share? Here, I have no competitor in Gujarati entertainment television. My focus is to not grow share, because there is nobody to compete with there, but to create that marketplace for Gujarati television. So that's my last point in terms of why the success of Colors Gujarati to me is very important from an industry standpoint and where we go from here. I'm not going to talk too much about that, but we had some learnings. We started with some lighthearted sitcom uh, kind of content uh, in November 2014. We're now experimenting with a new show that's really taken off well called Suri. That's the story of a small girl in a small town or village of Gujarat. And just last week, we get our ratings television ratings every Thursday. It's for the first time beaten uh, Life OK and Sub. So it's the first time we've seen the traction where now <laughs> the story of this girl from Gujarat, a small town in Gujarati, is now beating Sub and Life OK, and that's a big, big you know, step up and boost of confidence for us. So that's a learning process for, for us. We'll take it forward from where we are. And we want to do a lot more of what we are doing so far. So Gujarati films, coming to films, of course, I think what's been happening over the last two, three years, uh, Bay Arch, Kivirita Red Jaish, recent Chelo Divas, etc., is really, really good news for all of us, and me included, because we want to see that traction where the Gujarati audience starts coming back to consuming Gujarati language entertainment. But the big but is if the films are doing so well, why is, why is there, there's not a single satellite deal been done in the last couple of years? Not one single film has found its way to television. Now, I have a question here, and I want to change the word. You know, I said satellite is blank, and the revenue word is not important right now. Now, the students here, let me ask the students, which is the biggest hit of a Gujarati film? The shout out, which is the biggest Gujarati film recently? OK, Chello Devas. What's the revenue of the film? So, okay, how many people do you think have seen that film? Number of people? No, take the numbers, the 16, 18, 20 crores, divide that by average ticket price. How many people in a theater? Eighteen crores, eighteen crores, fifteen crores. Take a higher figure, twenty crores is the revenue. Twenty crores, average ticket price, hundred rupees, means twenty lakhs. Average ticket price, 50 rupees. Average ticket price, 80 rupees. It's not happening today. Your 18 lakh people is not enough. Okay, If you want to be in the game, unless you're 70 years old, 80 years old and going to retire next year, I'm presuming most of you, even the filmmakers here are young and the people back there are much younger. So you want to play the game, time? Okay, so I'll wrap up. So there are alternatives. We can talk with the other film, uh, with all the film producers and alternatives. But there are alternatives to satellite revenue price if the price cannot be met between the two parties. There are marketing barters that we can look at. There is uh, slot sales that we can look at. There's revenue share we can look at, and there's a limited telecast window that we can, you know, look at. 
So all of these are ways to try and work around the mismatch in the satellite price expectation and the satellite price that the television is today uh, valuing the films at. Okay, I'm going to wind since I've been asked to wind up. But any questions, happy to take. I don't know, Komal, or how much time we have for questions. Directly. Always directly. And even the market who claims that they are buying for us, they're not buying for us. I, at least, I can speak for my network across all the channels we buy directly. We do not. If you have a dealer on your behalf, that's fine. We don't have a buying side dealer. Yeah, but I'm saying always talk directly to the channel. You'll get the right, right response. Anuji, uh, uh, though essentially you're talking about the pricing and stuff, uh, I was more interested in uh, getting your perspective on the co content again. Uh, you talked about Suri you have just launched and various other uh, successful shows. Uh, I wanted to know that how is this Suri different content-wise from... Finish that. Second thing we are conscious of is that we thought the perception of Gujarati television, just like uh, films, is of a rural or affluent. I think having broken that myth as a brand, we realize the essence of Gujarat or the essence of any community is lost in the big cities in the urban milieu. The essence or the rootedness or the real story or the dialect or the dressing is something you can show on screen when you go back to the smaller towns. Which is why now in our second phase we've gone back to the smaller towns which where Suri is set in a different context and narrative. The third point, I think it was being discussed in the morning content session which you were part of. I don't think content fundamentally changes across any medium. The stories that are about human emotions, human lives, the narratives in terms of the plot points are very similar. It's the treatment that is different and the contextualization that you make it different for a person to relate to it more versus something else that he sees in another uh, language. So, as per your, ex uh, your experience, uh, the contextualization that you talked about, uh, uh, it rates more if the context is with the rural audience, story-wise, subject-wise? No, so let me rephrase that. A, Suri is doing very well across urban and rural Gujarat. So it's not a rural-focused uh, content. I think urban Gujarat is also watching that, particularly because that's giving them something that they're not getting the same setup on a national channel. If I'm a national channel, by default, I'm catering to a lowest common denominator. So even if I want to make a Gujarati serial, a Saswav serial, I need to make sure the guy in UP and Haryana and Rajasthan and Bihar is watching it. So I pull down the Gujarati earth of that content. So in a local show, I can pull that up. So it's just the style or packaging that I pull up, but the human stories are human stories. Anujji, uh, I'm Rugang Shah, I'm associate producer of uh, uh, Gujju by the Great. Yeah. Uh, you said you have shown the slides and all this thing, but one thing is missing. You have not talked about anything, how Gujarati super hit films will increase your TRP. That is missing. How it will benefit Colors Gujarati? That is not shown in your slide. You, you know what I mean to say. Please. I thought I shared a lot about the ratings, what drives ratings, why it's important, why the word super hit doesn't exist in my dictionary. No, well, super I mean, what, does not what drive I mean ratings. to say that second if, reason, yeah. if, if, see what you are showing is that uh, just now, the film, Raymond, just now, you cannot give good price because of such things. But the movies which you are showing and, uh, the, and the movies particularly which have done good business in Gujarat, urban films, all these urban films, it will also help your channel also I fully in agree. TRP. I fully agree. Yeah. But I'm so you should, you should offer good price that way also. Thank Very you. Good. By this presentation, उन्होंने उन्होंने हमें ये bifurcation और ये differentiation समझाया कि how when it goes on 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 television any film जब TV rights के लिए select की जाती है उसके parameters अलग हैं, right sir? That's what. Just to answer that, I'm saying good price is a function of the market. If the good price is compared with a Marathi or in Marathi a good price is 50 lakhs. Hello, मैं मैं ऐसी films जानता हूँ Marathi की जिसको तीन करोड़ भी मिले हैं. Now you want me to 
नहीं करेक्ट हाँ, तो हाँ, उसके हाँ, पैरामीटर्स अलग है हाँ, तो वो तो एक वेग ये वेग आंसर है पैरामीटर अलग है ये तो एक वेग आंसर है let me let me give you a direct answer okay. the ratings in one aspect the revenues another aspect i need to earn ad revenues i am making an open proposal to here to all of you here that take the slot get the sponsor keep the money so you, if your films are really good they get great ratings on the channel which is my point there take the revenue take the slot and you will know how much revenue you learn from that and please take it i am open to that but get your product seen by the 2 crore people and that's a win win for you my counter proposal it my counter proposal is this proposal can be discussed separately out, okay, outside okay, this, fine, okay, yeah, fine, okay fine it's okay it's a very personal fine. offer that's what yeah okay thank you so much thank you mr anuj big round of applause for mr anuj from colors